We better go live. We're about to go here, boys. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Claremont uh, at Abbotsfield Park. It is the Barwick's Retail Wholesale Landscape Supplies STJFL Gala Day. Well, there is the siren. Gala Day for the under 14 boys. It's the Bulldogs v Clarence. Meant to be a pretty even contest. Well played there by Burden, the vice captain for the dogs, going in nice and hard. Absolutely wonderful conditions. The fog's just lifting. A little bit of dew on the grass. I went out and had a look before as the Bulldogs come forward underneath their main grandstand area and running out there was Blake Lancaster who sees it over. And a very good morning to you, Martin Duffy. Duff, uh, we came out here very, very early. A big crowd building and expecting a fantastic day of STJFL footy. Yeah, we've got four games ahead of us here, Andrew. And uh, there was a, the Bridgewater Jerry was out and about, but now think, thankfully it's lifted certainly has is going in very hard well picked up there by Lockie Trot tries to get the handball over he does well to go back in to get it again here come the dogs they're building very strongly as they come in now but Clarence have the numbers back well played by Johnston Johnston goes to the true center half back uh, position very brave kick to try and switch that ball there's Eli Bott Bott back inside a little bit scrappy early, but you'd expect that, Duff, just because of those slippery conditions. Yeah, no, it's going to take probably the length of this game to dry out, I'd say. But it is a sunny day, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was a little bit subdued before this match, but as soon as the siren went, look at these boys. They are really focused. Yeah, I'm, uh, just a question on notice to you, Duff. I know you had great uh, athleticism as a, a junior footballer, and you loved the wide-open spaces. You would have loved to have played on this big over, wouldn't you? Well, I actually kicked a goal. This is a true story. Under 17s for Clarence from just inside the square. Which is only about a 45-metre kick at this ground, but I, I remember that. Yeah, it's an interesting... Uh, well, very wide. Love to see that. I wonder if you've got it on footage. We can try and get Jerry to bring that up uh, maybe during the break. I'm sure he's got it on file. <laughs> but uh, it, one thing about um, the conditions today, for the smart footballer and the football prepared to run, you're going to get great reward for your effort on this oval, aren't you, Duff? Yeah. So here come Clarence. Uh, they're up and about. It's going to be a really good game. Mansfield uh, gets that kick away. Here come the dogs, and it's a good, strong tackle here. Of course, uh, it is umpire appreciation round, and we very much appreciate our umpires. And we've got uh, Fletcher Ryan and Malcolm Ingalls uh, with the whistles uh, today, Duff. And we do say a warm thank you to our umpires who put in week in, week out to make the yeah. uh, AFL possible. And great initiative by the AFL to have this every year now. And I think maybe it was last year or the year before it came in. And uh, it's a very important week for footy. So that was a lovely kick in by Page for Clarence. And uh, we can just see here, the big fella goes back and takes a nice mark in Edward Johnson. He's been at both ends of the grounds. He's a good athlete. Good cut of a lad too, as you can see here. Just uh, going back, sizing up the goals. He looks like he's going to go the drop punt. And Gee. he kicks it. Big, strong kick. And i tell you one thing, uh, Martin Duffy. I'm going to get out there at quarter time with my form, <laughs> see if I can sign him up for Carlton. He needs to get over there and show them how to oh. kick. Uh, I was somewhat bemused from uh, the main caper there last night with kicking yeah. around the body from straight oh, in right. front. But look at that kick. They need to have a look at the Barwick's Retail Wholesale Landscape Supplies STJFL season in the under-14 division to see how to kick the footy. And Gee. you would just put this young man on, and that is a cracker of a kick. That's a great goal. I mean, he's kicked that at least 45, and, you know, the boy's only 14 years of age. That's a great kick. So there we saw on the Mood Food replay, beautiful kick by Clarence's Edward Johnson. And uh, we just checked the Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard, which shows Clarence one goal straight, six to the dogs yet to score. Very even contest. In fact, as we just look down at our uh, Duff TV computers, it's the dogs who have had the most entries and time inside 50. But that amounts for nothing, as that's a fantastic mark taken by Bott. He's moved up forward and looks very, very dangerous. Bot goes the big, long kick. It's a 50-50 ball that's seen it over the line in a couple of really good contests. One thing I've noticed already, Duff, uh, Coach Todd Anderson, we saw the runners come out. I, I think he's sort of saying to his players, you can get lost on this big oval. And they've got some good big pillars 
yeah. uh, at centre half forward and full forward. So let's get it into them after we come out of our back line. And they're really doing that well, aren't they, they so far? Certainly are. Uh, and of course, the Clarence boys play out of uh, Clarence High, which is much narrower. Yes. Probably, uh, you know, good, probably 20 metres, I'd imagine. That's the thing with this oval, you can get seduced by its width, and if you get out there, it sometimes takes a lot of work to bring it back in and to see the ball come to, uh, back to umpire Ingalls. And, and that's a great example why umpire Ingalls is an umpire as he dropped that one, Duff. <laughs> the former centre half forward, big burly fella now, he's just uh, lacking a bit around the chest as age has caught up with him. But I tell you what, he's a great whistleblower, isn't he? Goes well. Very experienced competitor as the ball comes back in again. I was talking to some of the Bulldog supporters earlier on. Uh, noticed Ben Beams down there who yes. is one of the uh, assistants. So they've had some good wins of recent time he told me Duff but he said this is going to be really test them. Sometimes again when you have some if you like easy kills you can get some false sense of where you're at and they knew that today would be a hard competition against the visitors from the eastern shore and uh, that is Anderson. Anderson, a good left footer, goes in. Oh, that's a strong mark taken there. I think that's Johnston again. He's a ripper as he goes Gee, up. He's got time, hasn't he? He certainly does. Beautiful vertical leap. He certainly looks like a great athlete and uh, knows what he's doing. With, we saw that with that wonderful kick that he did as uh, Bot, very influential early. They've got some good size boys going in hard was uh, trot good tackle there by the dogs that's the sort of thing that lifts them and inspires them well they're played there by mitchy noble it's just those little one percenters sometimes stuff isn't it that can actually lift a team just a tackle or a smother that uh as a as a team member you look over and you think oh my teammate he, he's fair dinkum i've got to get in and have a crack as clarence now running straight via mansfield back out towards bot bot goes in playing from behind this time and well done by the dogs they're under a fair amount of pressure and each time those pressure kicks come out Clarence have the answers so far but now they've got numbers they decide to kick it off it's that sun now has really come out from yes. behind the clouds which oh, is it's warming you can see it beautifully it warming up and drying up it is silhouetting the players a little bit that uh, picture will improve viewers as we go on during the day but uh, yep just starting to you know I reckon it's hovering around seven degrees right now Yes, well, I left uh, Cremorne this morning, Duff. It was about uh, 23. Very warm conditions down there. Good handball out. Well, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but here comes Beams. Beams brings that ball back. Brilliant play by Beams. Looking for Lancaster, and the big fella goes back. But that was great skill there by Beams, Stuff. A lot of young yeah. fellas there might have just hooked that back at a shot for goal, but looking to the dangerous position. But moreover than that, what he did, he made the big forward run into the open space. He said, you go out there and mark the ball and have a shot for goal. So here is Lancaster. He's a left footer. Goes back. Just pulled that one. Yes, he did. How, how exciting is it, Andrew, to hear some of those names? You know, Beams, Barwick, oh, yes. uh, Anderson. I remember Toddy playing with Clarence not that long ago. And yeah, now, it is. Uh, now they've got boys playing a great game. And it's great that... Uh, they're putting in the time, energy and effort to teach the next generation. And when you get quality coaches like those names you just said, Duff, uh, they're in good hands, aren't they? The young boys and girls of the STJFL. That's uh, Eli Bott. We've called him quite a number of times already in this first quarter, which is now eight and a half minutes old. That is a very bold kick that goes back towards the centre-half back position, but they've decided to try and open the play up and there are plenty of spaces to open up on this big Abbotsfield Park oval here in very very sun drenched Claremont here they go again to the dogs up against it well, there is Samuel Brickick back there for Clarence getting it out further towards the running Mizzen Mizzen looks further afield for Page but chipping in there is uh, Gulliver the vice captain for the dogs he handballs over to Blewett Lewitt's in a fair bit of pressure. They're tackling very nicely. Every time that the Bulldogs seem to pick up the ball, there is no time and space there. Well, that's the old chestnut of the umpire blowing the whistle before <laughs> the acceptances of the... I put my hand up, Duff. I did that in one of the did games you? that I umpired as well. And my excuse, I actually made a bit of a joke out of it and uh, said that it was my mistake. But uh, you can see there the Clarence... Uh, I think... Let's have a look there. I think that was uh, Lukey Allen. He recovered.
beautifully and kick that ball on. Sometimes you just assume occasionally you think, well, that's yeah. an easy chess mark. They'll take that one. Well, we'll sometimes the they, they get away with it sometimes because they end up taking the mark. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. So there is a nice long kick out towards Mansfield of Clarence. Claremont fighting hard in here. It's great to see that Bulldog Guernsey running around Duff as well, isn't it? Oh, traditional jumpers here. Yeah, yeah, I think it's tremendous. Of course, the Bulldogs had a good win last night a very, against a very ordinary opposition in the Carlton Football Club. But it's all about the youth and the juniors of Tasmania. And uh, won't it be exciting that we can be looking out here, Duff, it could be your, your Johnsons or your Beams could be playing for the yeah. Tasmanian team in a few years' time in the AFL. And the thing that we forget about, there's going to be a VFL side. So, you Correct. know, if you're next level down, that's a pretty amazing achievement. Oh, very much so. And, of course... Beams, of course, uh, the Ben variety, didn't he play well for the VFL with the Devils when they were going around Duff? Oh, I remember Ben very well when he came back from, from Melbourne uh, and I think he was the captain. I think you're right. No doubt about that. So there is Jakey Beams down there. He's been thrust aside. He's uh, got that beautiful left foot like his dear old dad, but he is shaping up and running very nicely as Claremont come back inside. It's a very courageous kick, but I, I like the way they're doing that, Duff. It's been drilled into them by Coach Carr. Take it uh, on. Take the game on, and I think that's a, a wonderful thing that they're trying to do out here at uh, Claremont. There is Gulliver again going in hard, so we're 11 minutes down in this first quarter, feeling their way, and the, I think the uh, football will certainly come up a notch as the game goes on because we can already see that... Uh, that sheen has gone off the ground. It was very, very greasy conditions early on. It's just starting to dry out as umpire Ryan will come in to throw this one a lot. What's been great about this is that, you know, this is only, I think, the fourth ball up in the whole quarter. It's been open. Good handball there. And uh, one of the things, that hasn't been a lot of scrimmage play, Duff. They're trying to get the ball out into open spaces and look for each other, not just kick and hope. Jeez, oh, look at this boy go. Very strong. Brilliant, long, raking kick. That's all of 40-odd metres. And this is the kick that's probably let them down, this this one here, Duff, across that half-forward line where Clarence have been good. But the dogs, they uh, have grabbed that one as it's gone close. Tremendous work here. I just couldn't quite see. It might have been Farrow, point. but I'll just double-check that. It might be uh, Sebastian Farrow, I think. But three on the back there, I think. I did... I did go out there at, uh, before the game, Duff, and yeah. I, I stood beside the young fella, <laughs> and uh, I noticed he had plenty of hair both on the legs and on the chin. Yeah. And I, and I thought to myself then and there, uh, it, I wouldn't like to play along that, big, that young man there. He's a he unit. Very, very strong-looking young fellow. Ball Here he goes. back in now. Big fist goes back inside as uh, Brickett for Clarence goes on there. Bit of confusion. In fact, it certainly is Duff Sebastian Farrow, as we thought. He right. goes again. There was a fellow who played with North Hobart back in my day, uh, Stephen Rattray. Oh, Do you yes. remember him? Big barrel chest, number 37, long sleeves. Oh, wasn't he a unit at this age? You go into the game and you just your knees would be shaking. Oh, look at that play, Duff. That is good team, inspirational play. There's not a lot of stats there for Maxi Gulliver, the vice captain, but we see here on the Mood Food replay as Trot goes out wide, that sort of thing, that desperation, you suddenly, your eyes widen and you say, that's the sort of thing that we need to do, bring to the table if we're going to win the game yeah, today. A little bit of a momentum change here, just back to the dogs. Yep, it is. They haven't got full value for it just yet, but I think that Coach, Coach Carr would be really, really happy with this last passage of play, Duff. You're quite right. You can sense it, can't you? There's a, it's quite tangible. You can feel it around the ground. It's just starting to fill up too. Lots of colour. Uh, blue, red and white, fantastic day out here. It's, uh, so all the boys will probably be out here to have a look at each other, feel each other out in the uh, 2023 season. They're going to be all having a, a run round at Abbotsfield Park. And there was McMullen trying to force his way forward. Just about to pick it up. Well done by Beams again. He's been very influential on that uh, scything uh, left foot. It's getting close to quarter time as in defence is uh, Texie Greg. Greg was able to get, a, get it across to his teammate. 
trots there for Clarence. A little bit high on the dogs, but uh, oh, that is Jackson mother. Downey. Again, it's these little one percenters that uh, are starting to ship some momentum now as uh, the dogs are really applying some pressure on Clarence now. And here he goes, oh, he goes Sebastian low, Farrow. Jeez, I, I get my favourite players in the STJFL off you. I don't like to always, you know, pick them out. But I just like the way this boy goes about his footy straight ahead. Well, I don't think he'd be able to run in any curve stuff. He's like a steam train. He's on the tracks and he's... Wow, that's a strong siren for quarter time. And we just check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which reads the dogs. One behind one to Clarence, one, one, seven. That goal was a beautiful set shot by Edward Johnson down at the uh, highway or the Mona end of the ground. But Duff, a very, very even contest. Yeah, low scoring, but you're right. It, uh, entertaining, the ball was flowing around beautifully. And I just thought the dogs just got their way back into that in that last five minutes so it'll be interesting to see how they come out in the second quarter okay well great to hear your view on the game if anyone knows about the stjfl caper it's martin duffy he's been watching it now i would have thought for at least 35 40 years no, so 23 23 is it duff yeah fantastic for 23 years so we're going to take our first break from uh, abbotsfield park and we hope you're enjoying the coverage of junior football we'll be back with the second quarter very shortly This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers Building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day.
welcome back to Abbotsfield Park at a very, very sun-drenched Claremont uh, area now. The little bit of fog was rolling through the valley in the early stages of the game, but that uh, has subsided as it is an absolute picture here at uh, Claremont. And I have to say I'm absolutely thrilled that I am joined by uh, Ned Gregg. <laughs> from uh, Clarence. He's one of the better players in the under 11 and he's jumped in the commentary booth to, to help me. Ned, welcome to Duff TV. Thank you. Great to have you on board. His brother Tex is uh, playing out there, but let's go back to the footy. It's a strong mark taken there by uh, Mitch Noble. Noble goes out wide and that's a very nice play as Maxi Gulliver has taken a mark. He's a big barrel chested fellow. We can see he's going back putting the mouth guard in the sock. And what do you think, Ned? He's a normally a pretty good kick. Do you think he's going to get it from here? Yeah, I reckon he can kick it from here. All right, let's have a look at him. He's going back, taking up his options. I like the way he's running in. He looks very confident. Beautiful uh, drop kick. It hasn't moved. It's just gone to the side. I thought the umpire was going to signal and uh, just the minor score. So you were telling me a few minutes ago, Ned, that your brother Tex, who's playing out and doing a very nice job, he, he had a problem with concussion. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago he got concussed, um, so he got hit in the face and fell over. Yep. Mm. So now he's wearing the helmet and he went through the concussion protocols and he had a, a week or two off, did he, Ned? Yep, he missed two games. And that's good. That's really pleasing to hear that uh, those protocol, protocols and so he's, he's actually going very nicely and here come Clarence coming down towards the clubhouse end but the dogs just fighting very hard through Nate Blewett kicking it back through the middle and here's the big strong Sebastian Farrow and, and where do you normally play your best football Ned? Um, the forward line or the midfield? Oh yeah, you look like you're a good athlete. You're lean and I know you can't see him ladies and gentlemen. I reckon he's an under 11. He stands about six foot two. Big strong looking rooster. Big smile on his face. It's great to see the, uh, the next commentators coming through in Ned Gregg who's uh, stood up and said I'll come and help the old Silver Fox and it's good to see him. There is Clarence. I think that might be uh, Trot getting that quick kick. But Sebastian Farrow, I tell you what, Ned, he's a big, strong fellow that playing at centre-half back, isn't he? Yeah, he really makes a difference down there. He does, doesn't he? How'd you like to go out and stand next to him and know he's going to play on you? I wouldn't. No, same here. I reckon you and I should stay in the commentary tower. There's no doubt about that. And here come Clarence, but standing tall is Simpson for Claremont. Simpson gets it out wide, but it uh, just can't pick it up is Beams and in that first quarter I noticed Beams he's getting plenty of the ball as well Ned he's a lovely left foot kick isn't he yeah he has a beautiful boot on him and a, some good handballs too very much so well there we go we're very very fortunate to hear that ulcer tones of Ned Gregg who's joined me from the Clarence Football Club one of the preeminent players in the under 11 competition it's Clarence getting a handball comes further afield. Oh, they just try and get that one and sock it off the ground but Claremont are holding firm and here he is again. Nice work by Gulliver, uh, the vice captain. Goes down the wing position. Good spoil. Claremont under a little bit of pressure in this early stages. Gulliver picks it up. Nice, long, raking kick. Goes close towards that boundary line there as McMullen also has the helmet on but picked up beautifully by Claremont and that was Finn gets it back into a very dangerous area handball comes over oh did one bit too much and a great tackle by Bott and I tell you what Ned this young fella Bott has been fantastic for the Roos so far hasn't he yeah he's had a beautiful season this year yes well he's leading from the front there is no doubt about that Eli Bott a name we will be hearing a lot more of I reckon over at Clarence Drifting back there is Jackson Downey. Good contest. It's Claremont. Kick it back towards the goals. It's going very close. And it's just been socket over. And uh, that's better. They've been very close so far, haven't they, Ned? But they just haven't been able to get a goal, the dogs. Yeah, they've hit three points now. And they just can't seem to get it through the big sticks. Yes, well, they're trying very hard, I'm sure. As Clarence. 
come out wide. Oh, that's a nice mark. Just slowing the game down a little bit. And if, uh, tell me, Ned, have you ever played a game on this big oval? No, but I've been here a few times as Tex is also an umpire, so yep. he umpires out here a bit. Gee whiz, I tell you what, it's, uh, it's a long way to run, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very much so. All right now, ball back in towards the middle. And here is uh, Martin Duffy's favourite player, Sebastian Farrow, the big, strong, burly fella coming through again. Here he goes. They call him the bulldozer out here at Claremont. Just couldn't get a kick away, so he goes the handball. Excellent work by him. Jacob Burton again. They're teaming up nicely. So they've had plenty of the possession so far have uh, Claremont, but they just, as Ned said just a few minutes ago, haven't been able to get it through the big sticks. Nice work there, umpires let it go. And the other thing, Ned, uh, they're wearing the green armbands for umpire appreciation, and it was great that you just said that uh, Tex does some umpiring, and it's, uh, what do you think of the umpires? They do a great job, don't they? Yeah, they do, and it's really good how they, even at the AFL level, as you saw the other night, they had the junior umpires come out, so they really appreciate them. Yeah, very good indeed. So here comes Clarence going back in. I'll tell you what, it's oh, ever so close. Gee, that was nice play. They look dangerous, Clarence, as well, don't they, Ned, when they come in? Because the forward line's very, very open. Is that something that you know you, you, you've obviously listened to a, some of the talks from Coach Anderson? Does he tell the players to try and keep the forward line open? Yeah, they really want to push the the Claremont backs back so then they have an open forward line because they're a fast team. Oh, well, it's great that we've got this inside here at Duff TV. Uh, we're just tapping into the uh, cranium of Ned Gregg and he's giving us some wonderful insights into how Clarence go about their work. So maybe I'll drill him and uh, all the other coaches can thank me for it as he can... Uh, He's just got a, he's a wealth of knowledge as here comes Clarence again. And as Ned said, they've pushed up nice and high to try and get behind. That was Will Anderson who was back there, but a big strong mark taken by Bot. Bot looking to come back, but oh, that particular kick's gone a, a little bit of awry and a very, very nice mark taken by Clark. And Clark is one of the co-captains of uh, the Claremont Football Club big strong kick and there's a great mark by Clarence I think now what's happening Ned that um, the Jews coming off the grass and now the players are starting to mark it because the ball's not so greasy would you agree on that yeah I reckon it was a bit foggy this morning so I hit a Jew and no it's coming off well now look at that you can see it bouncing through the cricket ground there is a big chance as uh, James Page picks it up fumbles but he goes back in there's a few players out there with the big long mullets, Ned, now. As I look across at you, you're a bit clean cut. You take after the old silver fox. What do you think of those big mullets? I reckon a big mullet uh, with your colour, it's emblazing in red. I reckon that would look pretty fire if you had that. Uh, got St Virgil's can't have a big mullet there. Oh, I see. St Virgil's. They, they're a bit strict on that, aren't they? Yeah. And what's, the, what's the motto of St Virgil's? Do you know what it is? No. By deeds, not words. And uh, gee whiz, I'm showing the old thing. There he is, Jerry. He's uh, in the special, in the booth over there. He's an old St Virgil's boy, I think. And he he lives by that. He's a doer, not a talker. As uh, here it goes. Good pick up. Nice work by Bo Williams. Back in towards the wing position. Eight minutes gone. Already, I think, Ned, because uh, it is a big ground, it's a little bit hard to score, isn't it? But the, it's been a battle of the back lines, hasn't it, mate? Yeah, the back lines are really putting in the effort today. They are, and it, it's really going from one to the other. So they are the dominant players as it's getting close to the line and uh, it's gone over. And that was Edward Johnson. And one of the things, Ned, that I spoke about in the first quarter was the beautiful kick that Edward Johnson did for goal. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did. And uh, how, if you've got a shot for goal in front or just on a 45, Ned, would you go back and kick a drop punt or would you try and screw it around your body? Drop punt. Oh, that's what we love to hear at uh, Duff TV. This around the body stuff when uh, you're straight in front, I can imagine you'd be doing that. And here is Sebastian Farrow. 
He better get a bounce in soon. We can see there, Ned, that's still a little bit slippery. I think the boys need to learn from uh, those challenges that when you're playing, and especially in these early conditions, you have to sort of get that kick away. Otherwise, the ball will just slip and go, and Clarence is setting up nicely just behind the ball. So it uh, is just about 10 minutes gone, and we haven't got a goal yet. That's a big, strong tackle by Murtagh for the Dogs. As now, there is a chance. They put that one out in front. It was Chase Hunter. Hunter goes out towards that outer side. Bit of a scrappy old kick, but it gains valuable meterage. Back towards uh, Trot. Fumbled it on that occasion, and, and again, we can see it's going to be a kick go towards Claremont. And here is a big chance for Claremont as a mark is taken by Gulliver. Oh, what's happened here? Ned, I think that's a 50-metre penalty. We'll see here on the Mood Food replay and see what happened. Gee, that was undisciplined. Uh, could cost them a goal here as it was a 50-50 at best. And now Maxi Gulliver, he's going to kick from just one metre out and that's a lovely kick by him. Let's have a look at this on our Mood Food replay, Ned. Let's see if we can pick up what happened. So the ball comes in towards Gulliver. Yeah, he has it. Oh, you can see there, he got a push, didn't he, after he marked it. And the umpire says, you can't do that, son, and take him back. Well, that was a little bit undisciplined by uh, Lukey Allen. Yeah, it looks like it was just a two motion, so he stopped yeah. it, then push, unless uh, not a, as he, uh, not his run through. Yep. So we can see it beautifully described by Ned Gregg. Now, Ned, uh, you said that your um, brother does uh, text, does some umpiring. Do you uh, aspire to do some umpiring as well? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Some good pocket money there too. Yeah, a bit of, it bit is. Of red is in the old skyrocket, which is fantastic. So that was a really good kick there by Maxi Gulliver as we better check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which reads the Bulldogs 139 to Clarence 128. And for the first time, uh, Ned, the Bulldogs have got their noses in front. That'll give them some confidence, won't it? Yeah, it will put the Clarence boys down a bit because I know this was one of their biggest challenges. They wanted to really beat these guys. Yeah, well, it's only a half a footy, but uh, again, we can hear that inside from our aspiring commentator here, Ned Gregg, and umpire and footballer. So it's uh, great to have him with us in the commentary tower here, the Peter Sharp Tower. And uh, here he goes again. So this is Edward Johnson, uh, Ned. And we said before, just a few minutes ago, it's a beautiful kick for goal. It's a, it's a fair way out. Do you think he can make that distance? I don't know. It'll be a tough one, but I reckon if he gets it right, he might just be able to make it. All right, then. So let's have a look at him. Is he coming in directly? 45 out. We saw the last time he went for a kick. Oh, he's gone. The big boot. And I think it was just on his distance, but a strong mark taken by Anderson. I, I think that the, the dogs there, Ned, thought that was going to go through, but terrific play by Anderson just to get out the back. And Anderson, this is a very, very tight angle. I reckon he's got to go to the check side. Let's have a look at him. Here he comes. Oh, he's going to go on the left foot. Goes back around and a brilliant kick there by Billy Anderson and he's put it through. And Ned, that was a very, very clever play from Anderson. Yeah, he was just key heaving on his toes, never giving up, and he managed to get a mark there when the Claremont players didn't expect it. Yeah, look at this. They all but gave it up. Who was it there? Uh, number 12, that was Riley Simpson for the Dogs. He thought, I think this is going to go through for a point. So a fantastic learning experience there for young Simpson, yeah. who will be able to watch the tape back and think, well, next time I've uh, got to spoil that ball. But Anderson just went around his body, mate, and put that through for a great goal. Yeah, when if when we watched it, I saw that Anderson was actually behind the goals and then ran through on his toes and took the mark. So it wasn't expected. Yeah, so terrific work. And the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard now, uh, Ned, it shows that Clarence 2-2-14 two, two, to the Dogs 1-3-9. But here go uh, the Dogs. It's going forward. That was a quick... Snap there by Blake Lancaster that has just gone awry. And we can see now that uh, with uh, 14 minutes gone, the game is just starting to open up. And uh, I reckon that's because of the conditions. It's only going to get faster and more open as the game goes on because the conditions here are absolutely perfect. 
sunny conditions, uh, people walking around with their t-shirts. It's uh, just a colour that next teams have co are coming in and preparing for their matches. It's a great atmosphere out here at uh, Jim Horn Oval in Claremont. It's a bit of a scrimmage there and it will be a ball up. Holding on now, I don't think Clarence would want to give anything away as uh, umpire Ingalls throws that one up. Comes back in towards the dogs. Here they go. They need a mark. There's only seconds left. As the siren goes, that's pretty loud, Ned. I don't think there's going to be any confusion when the siren goes out here at the Jim Horn Oval. And we just checked the Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard. It shows that the Bulldogs are 1-4-10 to Clarence, 2-2-14. Two, two, for the Bulldogs, it was a lovely kick on goal by Maxi Gulliver. Uh, he got the aid of that 50-metre penalty. And in the first quarter, it was Edward Johnson, the lovely set shot on goal. And then the ever opportunist, uh, Billy Anderson, went back and uh, played a very, very nice mark. Well, Ned, it's a very, very even game. One thing I would say that the sign of a good team is uh, to answer a goal, and that's exactly what Clarence did just right then, didn't they? Yeah, they made sure they got back up after that goal and just strive to get another goal and get in front. So no, good by the boys. It certainly was good by the boys in uh, good by the boys indeed. So half time here uh, in the uh, Barwick's retail wholesale landscape supplies STJFL season in the under 14 boys. It's uh, the Claremont Bulldogs and the, the Clarence Roos playing a very very good and even contest. We'll have our half time break and we'll be back with all the action very shortly. In week out to make the yeah. uh, AFL possible. And great initiative by the AFL to have this every year now. And I think maybe it was last year or the year before it came in and uh, it's a very important week for footy. So that was a lovely kick in by Page for Clarence. And uh, we can just see here, the big fella goes back and takes a nice mark in Edward Johnson. He's been at both ends of the grounds. He's a good athlete. Good cut of a lad too, as you can see here, just uh, going back sizing up the goals he looks like he's going to go the drop punt and he yeah. kicks it big strong kick and i tell you one thing uh martin duffy i'm going to get out there at quarter time with my <laughs> forms if i can sign him up for carlton he needs to get a bit of a scrappy old kick but it gains valuable meterage back towards uh trot fumbled it on that occasion and and again we can see it's going to be a kick go towards claremont and here is a big chance for claremont as a mark is taken by Gulliver. Oh, what's happened here? Ned, I think that's a 50 metre penalty. We'll see here on the Mood Food replay and see what happened. Gee, that was undisciplined. Uh, could cost them a goal here as it was a 50-50 at best. And now Maxi Gulliver, he's gonna kick from just one metre out and that's a lovely kick by him. Let's have a look at this commentator here Ned Gregg and umpire and footballer so it's uh, great to have him with us in the commentary tower here the Peter Sharp tower and uh, here he goes again so this is Edward Johnson uh, Ned and we said before just a few minutes ago he's a beautiful kick for goal it's, uh, it's a fair way out do you think he can make that distance I don't know it'll be a tough one but I reckon if he gets it right, he might just be able to make it. All right then, so let's have a look at him. Is he coming in directly? 45 out. We saw the last time he went for a kick. Oh, he's gone, the big boot. And I think it was just on his distance, but a strong mark taken by Anderson. I, I think that the, the dogs there, Ned, thought that was going to go through, but terrific play by Anderson just to get out the back. And Anderson, this is a very, very tight angle. I reckon he's got to go to the check side. Let's have a look at him. Here he comes. Oh, he's going to go on the left foot. Goes back around and a brilliant kick there by Billy Anderson. And he's put it through. And Ned, that was a very, very clever play from Anderson. Yeah, he was just keep heaving on his toes. And This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the Old Bridges Brothers Building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. 
phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day. Welcome back. Welcome back here to the uh, Jim Horn Oval in, in Claremont, which sees the, the Bulldogs 
trailing Clarence by four points, but it is a very, very entertaining match so far. The sun's really come out. It's a cracker of a day. It was a lovely day yesterday. I, I went and took in some football down at uh, Lauderdale and emitted the sunscreen on, and I think it's going to be very, very similar out here in the northern suburbs of Hobart. Very popular, of course. It's a fantastic club out here at Claremont. Really, really good numbers. Got some great leadership as well, of course, as the powerhouse that is the Eastern Shore might of the Clarence Ruse. And it's a really good contest as Trot gets a quick kick away. But it's Claremont who picked that one up. They go back in towards the true centre-half forward position, coming out and spoiling it was uh, Jones for Claremont. Quick kick over. This is just what they would love to, but just went offside. But... I tell you what, Ned, that was good attack on the ball by the forward uh, Jones, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good attack. Just couldn't finish it there, but good start. That's what you want from your big forwards, Ned. I can see you're somewhat diminutive in style in, uh, in your stature, but you, you want your big power forwards to make a contest, don't you, and bring it to the ground. Yeah, you want them to make a contest, bring it to the ground, and then have those smaller forwards coming around him. Very much so. So now you can see here's a chance for... Claremont, Sebastian Farrow going back. Oh, very evasive. He's a strong character. Looking for one of the prime movers in Maxi Gulliver. Gulliver, big kick. Comes further afield. Good contest right down in front of us as Clarence are under enormous amounts of pressure. A lot of questions being asked of the Bulldogs very, very early in this uh, third quarter, what they call the championship quarter. Ball in dispute now. There is McMullen getting very close to the line and a good spoil there by Brickick as it goes out of bounds. Now I know, Ned, that you went down to the huddle at half time and had a listen to Coach Anderson. What was his main message to his players? Um, just keep those second and third efforts going and stay in front of your man and stay focused. Gee whiz, we're so lucky to have uh, the roving report of Ned Gregg, who uh, went down and had a bit of a listen. And, and uh, he's a wealth of knowledge, is young Ned. He's only uh, in the under-11s, but by oh, gee, he knows his footy. As here come Claremont, just pushing that ball forward, and Clarence are able to just hold that one up. Well, one thing, though, at the moment, Ned, Clarence are doing a good job in that uh, they haven't allowed Claremont to get a goal. It's funny footy, isn't it, mate, that... You have to take your chances when you have them, don't you? Yeah, you have to, if you have a chance, you've got to take it, otherwise anything could happen. No Games doubt. can turn around so quickly. Oh, it can, and uh, here come Claremont. They are surging at the moment. You really feel like if they can get a goal, they could get another one very, very quickly, but Clarence are doing a marvellous job so far, being able to keep a bit of width to them and, and holding them up at the moment. They really, it's all backs to the walls, as it is Farrow, who gets the big fist out. Farrow goes back in again. That's a long snap, but it's uh, out of bounds, and uh, it's Clarence. And Clarence won't mind this. They're just soaking up all the pressure. It's very open if they can get it through the middle, and they're really pressing high, are the dogs at the moment. We've noticed that, Ned. You can just see out there... There's a lot of extra Claremont boys inside their forward 50, aren't they? They're putting the pressure on Clarence. Yeah, there's a lot of boys, Claremont boys in there, so they're just trying to build up that pressure. But if Clarence do get away, they do have three men out the back, so it's a kind of a risky yes, thing. Yes, it is a risky thing there, <laughs> tell you what. Not pulling the ball over your eyes, Ned. You can see that as uh, umpire Ryan is going to come in and uh, throw this one up. Umpire Ryan, the more youthful of our two umpires, as they snap that one over and uh, it's just through for the minor score. There is a whistle on play. I'm not sure. I think umpire Ryan said there is no score on that one. It's going to be a ball up. So there it is in front of the Claremont goals and held without the ball. And it's going to be a free kick. Here go to Clarence for playing in front. And uh, that one goes to Bot. Bot goes out further afield. Gee, that's a strong mark. Excellent work there taken by Lukey Allen. 
And here is a chance now for Clarence. And as you said a few minutes ago, Ned, it is a risky play. And have a look at the open spaces for Clarence. If they can pick this one up, they are absolutely away. It's uh, Sergeant who just overruns it on that particular occasion. But it goes back to one of their prime movers in Johnston. Johnson just uh, juggles that one but can't bring it in. Going in really ferociously are the dogs in their defensive area. But look at Clarence arching the body is Sylvester. Sylvester going back towards the goals and uh, it's just gone out of bounds. But how many times in footy, Ned, do you see that where one team surges and they have it locked in their forward line they can't get a goal and the opposition just go whoosh up the other end and get one it happens a lot doesn't it yeah it does it it's very changing game afl and footy is it changes a lot yeah you could be winning by 30 points one second and then you hit the other team kicks five goals and now you're losing oh gee whiz back when i used to play ned that would never happen it was an arm wrestle but nowadays uh the belief, you get one goal and you think you can come back from anywhere there. Gee, you've got a great insight to the game as Bulldogs going back through the middle. But Clarence were awake to that one as they go out wide. Bot finds the running player in Taxi Greg. Greg goes further afield, goes towards Johnston, whom we know is a goal kicker. They're under a bit of pressure, so again, it's those back lines are standing firm. Allen picks it up, goes back inside, playing on this time was Bot, and he thought he had some time and space, but he was locked up there by Jakey Beams. And that's the particular one, you wouldn't blame uh, Bot for that one, Ned. It's probably the players around him that need to tell him, don't they? It's, you have to talk a lot in footy, don't you? Yeah, you don't have eyes everywhere. There's something my coach says, so you've got to have people talking to you and... Yeah, that's uh, that's right, isn't it? Because it's an unusual game, isn't it, Ned? It's played on a big ground, and players come from 360 degrees, so you're you're really relying on your teammates, aren't you? Yeah, you got to, it's one of the biggest sports where you got to rely on your teammates. Very much so. So here come the dogs. They come back inside. Up in front was uh, Trot. Couldn't quite bring that one in, and also it's going to be locked up as Mitchell Finn comes over. Oh, it's free kick to Trot. Well played by him, actually. He was at the bottom of the pack, and he deserved that kick, was Lockie Trot. Goes further to Bo Williams. Williams kicks now for Clarence. Big, strong spoil. So what are we? We're nearly eight minutes gone in this second quarter as Bott comes back inside. Clarence uh, looking for a way to get this goal. They are three points up, and now it's... Uh, the tide has turned, and it's Clarence's turn to be in the ascendancy as uh, Jake Beams, the co-captain, rushes over, picks that one and sees it across the line. It'll be a ball up. Ground starting to fill up. It is a gala day out here at the uh, Jim Horn Oval at Abbotsfield Park. All the under-14s are on display. I think it's a great initiative again by the STJFL to put the gala days on so uh, if you're playing in that division you can come and have a look at all the games and of course you can sit back in the old armchair and listen to the dulcet tones of people like Ned Gregg who bring a great insight into the junior football ranks. We've got the insider runners fighting very hard almost laying on him. Uh, that particular time was bot and uh, it'll be umpire Ryan, that's Fletcher Ryan throwing that one up, doing a really good job. You can see here that uh, it's going to be a free kick, shepherding that particular occasion. And uh, it is Claremont have an opportunity to drive this one. There's going to be hard one to mark because there's a lot of players in the forward line. So let's see what he can do. We know he's a good kick, but I don't think he'll make this distance. He's really roosted. It falls inside the square. They go up couldn't take it and so McMullen is at the front and the centre doesn't go that far and this is the kick they go forward and uh, it's a great mark taken by Gulliver and I tell you what Ned uh, Max Gulliver is a very dangerous forward isn't he? Yeah he's very dangerous down forward he, if, he, if it, the ball gets in near him he can easily pick it up and score or handball it or, or yeah. set up a, a goal Absolutely, mate. He's got a good vertical leap, Gulliver. He's got one goal. 
and he goes back he kicks the drop punt oh i reckon what happened there uh, ned it was just a bit too far out for him and you can see he just stretched and when you stretch for your kick you uh lent back and it's just gone to the near side but it's tightened it up as we check the brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard it shows the bulldogs one goal somewhat inaccurate six 12 to clarence 2 2 14 so that's seven shots to four but the team that's got the four points is in front. So the four shots is in front. So it just goes to show, Ned, you've got to take your chances, don't you, mate? Yeah, kicking straight is one of the biggest things in AFL and just junior footy. You've got to be able to kick straight and not kick that many behinds because, you know, like here, um, Claire, well, the Bulldogs, be in front by so much more, but just yeah. haven't been able to kick straight today. And who's your favourite uh, forward uh, in the AFL, Ned? Buddy Franklin. Oh, he goes all right, doesn't he? He's kicked one or two goals. And here is Johnson, who's a good goal kicker. It's a quick kick over. Look at it, it's going close. And wow, look at the good defensive work of Farrow. Now, do you model your game on someone like Buddy? Um, Who do you, if you were to say, you know what, Silver Fox, I reckon I play like someone in the AFL. Who would it be? Chad Warner. Oh, Chad Warner, that's fantastic. That's excellent. Here we go. Your, your eyes lit up when you said Chad Warner. Is he one of your favourite players? Yeah. Brilliant. So it's a free kick going to Clarence. And I think this is Trot. He's a small player, Trot, but gee, he's had a good go today, hasn't he, Ned? He gets in, he gets in uh, nice and low. He's got a lot of courage, hasn't he? Yeah, the size doesn't matter in AFL. Like um, Anderson, he's also not the tallest, but he's had a big impact today with the goal. He certainly has, hasn't he? He was very clever the way he hooked that one back. And here come Claremont. So what have we got? Uh, 12 minutes gone. And uh, for all the attacking that Claremont have done so far, they haven't been able to get a goal in this quarter, and that's the most important thing. If you get it inside your 50, you've got to maximise those opportunities, as you heard so beautifully from my co-commentator, Ned Gregg, who's joined us, who plays with the under-11 Clarence Ruse. Here come Claremont. That was good. Handball comes to Byrne. Byrne just kicks that one, and the big full forward... Brycey Jones has taken that mark and uh, Jones goes back now and we can see what's in front of him. Ned, what is he, mate? He's about 20 metres out directly in front and we're right behind this one. It's going to be interesting. Can Jones, for all the effort and energy that Claremont have put in, put that one through? He comes in, he kicks. Oh, my goodness. He's just pushed that one to the right-hand side, mate. That was a... Big miss there for the dogs. Yeah, if I might just say something. Yep. So early on in this game, we are, Tex Greg was playing down in the back line, right? but it looks like they've pushed him up to the midfield just to try and get that ball down to the board. Yeah, that's a good move, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, Tex is very effective runner. He got a lot of the ball early, and he, he's probably gone out of it a little bit, so they want to get him back into the game. So a miss there for the dogs, which sees another opportunity there irrepressible at the moment it's coming and oh nearly taken a mark he got in great position the jones there and nearly took it so if he keeps persisting like that he give himself another chance here they come couldn't quite pick that one up the dogs would just love to get a goal here it's only a minute to go so clarence are holding on as best as they can comes out the back they're surging now they pick it up cleanly and a strong tackle by Eli Bott, he is covering a lot of distance. He's been a very, very good player so far, Ned, for the Clarence Roos, hasn't he? Yeah, he's really um, inspiring the Clarence boys here today. He certainly is, and he's just taking his time because uh, he can see there's only 35 seconds left. No time on. 15 minutes of play. Louis Sylvester goes up. Couldn't take that mark. And Clarence now, gee whiz, can they get a goal? This is fantastic play by Clarence. It comes back to you, Sylvester, kicking it down. But Claremont are able to stop that attack as they now go back. They probably won't have time to get it. Only 10-odd seconds left. But that's good play by Claremont. We are really set up to have a cracker of a last quarter. It could go any way. 
So the siren has gone here at the Jim Horn Oval Abbotsfield Park in Claremont. And uh, we just check to notice that uh, the Bulldogs are one goal, 7-13 to Clarence, 2-3-15. And of course the scoreboard is courtesy of Brighton's Best Bakehouse, uh, home of the pie of the year, the tandoori chicken. Uh, what sort of a pie do you like, Ned? I like a curry chicken pie. Curry chicken pie. I know you told me a few minutes ago that you love your curry chicken pies. So there are the players coming in. They're going to get their last minute instruction. So I would suggest you don't want to go too far because this one can be a nail biter. We're not really sure who can win. Uh, the game is in the balance. So we're going to take our last opportunity to have a break here and we'll be back with the last quarter very shortly. This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10 p.m. every day.
Welcome back to Jim Horn Park and uh, the very, very exciting and close game between the Claremont Bulldogs and the Clarence Roofs. It's Andrew Silver Fox Hopwood and I, of course. Co-commentator Ned Gregg from the Clarence Football Club. Uh, he is one of the prime movers in the under-11 division and it's great that he's here. We just talking to Ned a few minutes ago. He's got a big game at 1 o'clock and he's uh, availed himself to just make him available to the commentary before he plays his big game in the STJFL ranks as Clarence coming forward first and they've got an opportunity as uh, players just gone down here let's just check I think that was uh, Mansfield it looks a little bit shaky there Ned doesn't he let's have a look on the replay he just got bumped over and uh, by a bigger opposition in Sebastian Farrow but geez jumped up and here we go again at coming deep into the forward line for Clarence oh, wouldn't they love a goal early on as the Bulldogs rather cleverly have seen that one over and uh, Riley Brown gives it back to Farrow to take the kick in look at Farrow he gets an additional 10 meters onto that booming kick out towards the wing position Luke Allen goes up for Clarence, can't bring it in, but he's making a fantastic contest of it. Claremont, but so dominant in that uh, third quarter that they just weren't able to get a goal, and Clarence did a great job to hang on, and under surging attacks by Claremont, they had one or two set shots, didn't they, Ned? But they just couldn't put them through for a goal. Yeah, they've <laughs> kicked a lot of points this game has, but there's been... I think. It's seven or eight, mate, haven't they? Yeah, at seven points. But it's just those set shots that, uh, <coughs> especially from close in front, that can really, really hurt you. So, but it's a great learning experience for these young fellas in the uh, under 13 Barwick's Retail Wholesale Land Safe Supplies STJFL season 2023. I think we've got about nearly 4,000 children playing in the boys and girls divisions all the way from Oz kicks to under 18 as Farrow runs his full distance comes back in towards the middle and finds Beams Beams the left footer always creative and uh, there is a great mark by Gulliver Gulliver moves it back in trying to get it down to the full forward area ball comes out it's built Gulliver goes again gets the handball over Jones is there. Jones comes out. The bullocking full forward goes on to his left foot, which is his wrong side. And he's put it through for a goal, the big fella. That's an absolute cracker by Brycey Jones. Ned, how clever was that to go on the wrong side of his body and drill it through for a goal? Yeah, it was really found the um, Clarence boys out there. No idea what was happening, but he ended up scoring a goal, and that puts Claremont in front. Well, one person who'll be absolutely thrilled with this passage of play is Martin Duffy, who's been watching junior footy for 23 years. One of his loves is seeing junior footballers go on the wrong side of their body. And look how Gulliver just charged through. Now, here is Jones. He's on the wrong side of his body, and he hooked that one over on his left side and has put it through. So let's just check now, Ned, the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard which shows now that Claremont are 2-7-19, three points in front of Clarence, 2-4-16 with, <coughs> excuse me, nearly four minutes gone. So plenty of time in the last quarter. They're full of runners. Burden picks it up. Burden comes down forward and uh, Claremont have another opportunity as the mark's taken by Burn. Burn goes into the full forward area. It spills out as a quick snap for goal. Oh, the dogs are on fire as they've put that one through for another goal. Look at the smile there on the old north and south. Beautiful work there by the Bulldogs and a clever goal taken by Mallinson for the Dogs. Let's have a look at this one, Ned. The fleet-footed Burden got that in so quickly. You can see here that Clarence haven't had an opportunity to set up. It's almost like two players there spoilt that ball. Uh, unfortunately, it was Texie Gregg running backwards went the spoil and I can't think the fullback come up great courage by Tex but where the ball spoiled they picked it up and got a goal and now the Bulldogs are red hot mate yeah they're on a last quarter surge here the Clarence just needs to 
slow down the game and bring it back into their terms. They certainly do. Well, they know they've got the firepower there. They've got uh, Johnson, uh, Anderson, Greg, Bott. So they've got plenty of uh, people who can kick a goal for them, but they just need to get it over that centre line. And here they come. They get a quick kick out there, but not before being told it was holding the ball and excellent work there by Jake Beams and the Bulldogs are really getting a rig along with five minutes <clears throat> into this quarter for all the other parts of the game. They had it down on their forward line but they weren't able to get it through the big sticks and in the first five minutes they've got two in this last quarter when it really counts most. Beautiful play there by Gulliver who just arches the back and sends them forward again. They are under enormous amounts of pressure are the ruse good contest it's uh, close to the line i think that was luke allen who's uh, been put on the ball and the umpires will just throw that one and then they'll bring it in about 10 meters big wide open expanses on the jim horn oval out here at uh, claremont which we've said before and at the moment it's certainly suiting the style of the dogs well there's a very clever kick over the back. It comes to Beams. He's a left footer. He tries to go back inside. They've got numbers. If they can get their dukes on it, they do. Great tackle by Clarence. Well done by James Page, who wrapped him up. That was desperate defending there, Ned, by the ruse. Yeah. James Page came across from Lord Adele for his first season at Clarence. Yeah, he certainly did a good tackle there, didn't he, as that ball's come over. And look at this, Ned. It's another goal to uh, the rampaging dogs. They are really snarling and growling now. That was Maxi Gulliver's second goal. And let's have a look at this one, Ned, in the Mood Food replay. I was just admiring that lovely tackle by Page. But when the ball spilled out, the outstretched hands, I think that might have been Texie Gregg, but it was a big, long kick. The opportunist goal by Gulliver... And we check now the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. It sees the Dogs 4 7 31 to Clarence 2 4 16. And I think, Ned, that the Bulldogs have really blown this game apart. Yeah, Clarence just need to tighten up here and try and slow the game down, as I said before. But yeah, the, the Bulldogs have had a lot of inside 50s this quarter and have just been able to converge. Yeah, that's the big difference, isn't it, mate? They've been able to convert on their opportunities, unlike in the other passages of play, as Tex Gregg takes a nice, strong mark. Uh, he has never given up. I like the way he goes about his work. And he goes uh, here as far as uh, Farrow. Farrow, a long kick, good contest. Coming out to try and mark it was Sylvester. Good effort by him. Another handball in shoes. Goes out on the uh, half-forward line and... Gulliver, good, strong player, has been very, very good for the Bulldogs today. They've had a good spread, evenness across their team. And uh, it'll be a ball up taken by umpire Ryan. Throws it up, but have got eight minutes gone. So halfway through this quarter, Clarence really need to make every post a winner now as the Bulldogs seem to be growing in confidence as it's a handball out to Roberts. Roberts has been tackled very, very nicely now and it's going to be Johnston who normally has played most of that game across that half forward flank, a very creative footballer, goes to his opposite number and here comes Farrow. Farrow the no-nonsense straight ahead. Why wouldn't he go directly down towards the bustling Jones and Brycey Jones has now uh, taken a very, very strong mark. He's taken a few good marks already, Ned, hasn't he? He's a, he's a, he seems to be a good target for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he's a good target, big, strong and tall. He can get up there and, yeah, they've just been looking to get it into his hands. OK, well, he goes back and, uh, if anything, Ned, that uh, Jones has been a great target. He's had a couple of set shots. I'm sure he's going to work on that part of his game. He had a beautiful snap, uh, one of the best left foot snaps we've ever seen. But just that set shot, he'll go back and of course Coach Carr and all the brains trust out of Claremont will work on that. He's got a big future. Here you go Clarence bringing out wider looking out for uh, Greg. Greg now 
he normally plays on and he does so this particular time. He's been really good coming back from concussion. One of the prime movers for Clarence. Blew it. Blew it. Very effective. One of the things I've noticed, uh, Ned, that the Bulldogs have been good by foot. They've been looking for each other and they've actually passed it nicely to each other, haven't they? Yeah, they've been good at passing today. They really found each other. And they've also been good at intercepting the yes. Clarence passes. Like that one there, that was an interception. It was out towards uh, Texie Gregg and it just went out of his clutches and the dogs were able to get that one. You can see here that was a good lead. It looks like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that was Anderson who's moved up a little bit now. Getting the handball. Clarence in this last ditch effort with only four and a half minutes to get those goals. They're trying. They never give up Clarence. That's the way that that club plays. Bulldogs in and under there, just sort of growing in confidence as the game has gone on. And the bottom of that pack was Clark, Jamison Clark. Very open now. Which way will the oval ball bounce? It goes out wider, coming back in. But here is Farrow. He'll, he'll mop up and he gets those afterburners. He goes the bounce now. Still not going to come up there. Hasn't quite learnt. Good, strong tackle by Bo Williams. Not rewarded because the ball had spilt. Farrow, big long kick back down towards the uh, wing position. Another disputed ball. Beams gets the uh, left-handed fist over towards Gulliver, the captain to the vice-captain. At the bottom of it there is Beams. Finds the safety of the boundary line and it'll be another ball up. So we've got uh, nearly 11 and a half minutes gone. Bulldogs. You would have thought, Ned, when you see the score 32 to 16, it was one-sided. It's been so even, hasn't it, today's yeah, game? Yeah, to be in really even up to um, for the first three quarters and then Bulldogs have just blown away here. Well, not blown away, just got some yeah. easy goals and Clarence have just been left in their dust. They certainly have. And that's the difference, isn't it, mate, when you kick accurately. Mm. So uh, the Bulldogs now getting full reward for their forward thrusts as Clarence are surging. I just love the way they never give it away, but I tell you what, Ned, this fella here, Sebastian Farrow, you and I said we wouldn't like to play him. How good has he been at centre-half back? Yeah, he's got some beautiful intercept marks and some spoils and tackles. He's just been great today. He's been very, very hard to pass. He's been one of the better players for the Bulldogs. Same with the Gulliver Beams as it is Gulliver who takes that ball, goes in. The forwards come up, couldn't quite take that one. It was a good leap. I think there was Finn and then Brown. They were able to mop it up. They get the quick kick back around, looking for Jones coming out. And Jones, he has really imposed himself on this match as he's come out and taken another very, very strong mark as uh, umpire Ingalls we can see there just showing him where he has to go. But uh, a great attempt to spoil that uh, big, strong fellow is Brycey Jones. Jones with that other set shot. Fair way out. Big, long kick. It's a big roost. It's just, again, push it to the right-hand side and uh, a minor score. But uh, he certainly is a good mark of the football, is Brycey Jones. Here come Clarence, more towards that outer side. Just trying to tap it out as best they can. But look at the dogs, they're just hunting in packs now. Every time that Clarence gets the ball, there's uh, two and three Bulldogs coming over. So all the questions were asked of them and they really did come out and answer. The game could have got any way in this last quarter, um, Ned, couldn't it? If Clarence got the first goal, yeah. maybe they got the run on, but... It was the Bulldogs who got the first one and within only one or two minutes they got a second one, didn't they? And that really blew the game open. Yeah, another thing is it seems like the Bulldogs have got a lot of um, men around the ball and mm -hmm. really outnumbered the Clarence. Wherever they are, it just seems like there's never a free Clarence man. So it's really good from Bulldogs. Do you think that's just uh, as that's another goal? I apologise, I'm enjoying my conversations with you. I think that might have been beams but we'll have a look at that one on the mood food replay gee whiz he's been good today as well um 
I think it's the work rate of the Bulldogs, Ned, isn't it, that they are uh, getting in numbers. We'll just have a look at this one. The tap came out. There was Beams. He was effective, clever, darted on his left foot and put that one through. So it just says to me that the work rate of the Dogs has been a little bit higher than the Ruse. Yeah, it seems like they've had a lot more energy in this quarter. Well, that score line, as the siren sounds, says that it was a very, very one-sided game, but that certainly isn't the case. But let's just check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which reads the Bulldogs. 5-9-39 to Clarence, 2-4-16. The goal kickers for the victors, it was Maxi Gulliver with two, uh, Jake Beams, Coden Mallardson and Brycey Jones. And for Clarence, it was uh, Anderson and Johnson. Well... They just finished far too strongly in that last quarter. It was a game that in that last part there, they just ran over the top of the roof. But, uh, Ned, it was a very entertaining match of junior footy. Yeah, it was a great game here today. It was really close up until the start of that fourth quarter. But, yeah. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Ned. It's been my pleasure to have you in the commentary tower. So just reiterating, in our first game of the gala day, it was the Bulldogs too strong for the Ruse. So as the boys come in and uh, shake hands, it's great sportsmanship. We're going to take a break and we'll be back very, very shortly in the replay of last year's grand final is Brighton up against Lindisfarne. Nearly 4,000 children playing in the boys' and girls' divisions all the way from Oz kicks to under 18 as Farrow runs his full distance, comes back in towards the middle and finds Beams. Beams the left footer, always creative. And uh, there is a great mark by Gulliver. Gulliver moves it back in, trying to get it down to the full forward area. Ball comes out, it's spilt. Gulliver goes again, gets the handball over. Jones is there, Jones comes out, the bullocking full forward, goes onto his left foot, which is his wrong side. And he's put it through for a goal, the big fella. That's an absolute cracker by Brycey Jones. Ned, how clever was that to go on the wrong side of his body and drill it through for a goal? Yeah. 7, 19, three points in front of Clarence. 2, 4, 16 with, <clears throat> excuse me, nearly four minutes gone. So plenty of time in the last quarter. They're full of runners. Burden picks it up. Burden comes down forward and uh, Claremont have another opportunity as the mark's taken by Byrne. Burn goes into the full forward area. It spills out as a quick snap for goal. Oh, the dogs are on fire as they've put that one through for another goal. Look at the smile there on the old north and south. Beautiful work there by, which we've said before, and at the moment is certainly suiting the style of the dogs. Well, there's a very clever kick over the back. It comes to Beams. He's a left footer. He tries to go back inside. They've got numbers. If they can get their dukes on it, they do. Great tackle by Clarence. Well done by James Page, who wrapped him up. That was desperate defending there, Ned, by the Ruse. Yeah, James Page came across from Lord Al for his first season at Clarence. Yeah, he certainly did a good tackle there, didn't he, as that ball's come over. And look at this, Ned. It's another goal to uh, the rampaging dogs. They are really snarling and growling now. That was Maxi Gulliver's second goal. And let's have a look at this one, Ned, in the Mood Food replay. I was just admiring that lovely tackle by Page. But when the ball spilled out, the outstretched hands, I think that might have been Texi Gregg, but it was a big, long kick the opportunist goal by Gulliver. It seems like there's never a free clearance win, so it's really good from Bulldogs. Do you think that's just, uh, as that's another goal, I apologise, I'm enjoying my conversations with you. I think that might have been Beams, but we'll have a look at that one on the Mood Food replay. Gee whiz, he's been good today as well. Um, I think it's the work rate of the Bulldogs, Ned, isn't it? That they are uh, getting in numbers. We'll just have a look at this one. The tap came out. There was Beams. He was effective, clever, darted on his left foot and put that one through. So it just says to me that the work rate of the Dogs has been a little bit higher than the Ruse.